Welcome back friends once again to my YouTube channel. In this video we will see the construction of rock anchor foundation. Grouted rock anchor foundations is a type in which long rods are placed in excavated holes and then grouted to fill the annulus. Anchors often are installed in a group and tied together through a cap to form a foundation. Rock anchor foundation is preferred where the soil or geological conditions are not suitable for conventional foundation methods. Rock anchor foundation is permitted only in a solid, sound non-weathering rock. Before excavating the pits, we need to know about the length, breadth and depth of the pit. For that first we need to know about the physical properties of the soil. This can be achieved through boreholes or soil investigation. Rig will create the borehole. The soil samples will be collected at different depths. Later the samples are sent at lab for identifying the strength, density, compaction, angle of internal friction, soil bearing capacity and chemical properties of the soil. Before pouring the concrete, we need to finalize the quantity of element required for one cubic meter of concrete mixture. This is done through trial mix design. In simple, this mix design gives us the formula by what proportionate each element need to be mixed. Let me explain about the basic data associated with the mix design. First, cement type. Depending on the presence of chloride and sulfate content in the soil, cement type is finalized. Second, slump requirement. To determine the workability of concrete. Third is the mix design table. First column tells about the list of elements required to achieve our desired strength. Second column tells us about the size of the element. Third column tells us about the condition whether dry or wet. And fourth is about the weight in kg required for one cubic meter of concrete. So, after the trial mix is done cylinder or cube will be taken. Then the cylinder or cube will be kept in the water tank maintaining proper temperature. After 3 days, 7 days and 28 days the cylinder will be crushed and the compressive strength will be noted. If the compressive strength meets our requirement then the trial mix design is passed. Or we have to repeat the process by changing the quantity of element. Now let us see what are the tests conducted in mock-up trial mix design. Temperature. Slum. Density of concrete. Air content. Bleeding. Initial and final setting time of concrete. Durability test. Chemical chloride and sulfate test. The slump test measures the consistency, workability, and ease of flow of fresh concrete. It can also be used as an indicator of an improperly mixed batch. This cone is filled with fresh concrete in three stages. Each time, each layer is tamped 25 times with a 2 feet metal rod. At the end of the third stage, when the cone is filled the mold is carefully lifted vertically upwards. The concrete then slumps. The slump of the concrete is measured by measuring the distance from the top of the slumped concrete to the level of the top of the slump cone. If the collapsed slump meets our design requirement we can proceed for pouring.
depending on the soil investigation parameters foundation drawing are prepared. Data that can be reviewed from foundation drawing are Anchor bar, footing and pedestal rebar list Pit size for excavation Length, breadth and depth of footing and pedestal Slope of stump As per the pit marking schedule pit marking at site is done. For best result use gypsum to outline the pits. Depending upon our necessity we can use excavator or JCB to excavate the pits. If hard rock is encountered rock breaker is used or blasting is done. Once all the four pits are excavated PCC is done to facilitate working platform. The drilling into the hard rock is executed through DTH machine. DTH stands for down the hole drill. DTH is basically a jackhammer screwed on the bottom of a drill string. The fast hammer action breaks the hard rocks into small cuttings and the dust are evacuated out. Once all the holes are drilled, anchor bar are inserted into the hole and the exposed portion of the anchor bar are kept at same level. Sicker grout is a cementitious, free-flowing, economical non-shrink precision grout which has high ultimate strength. Water is added in prescribed quantity to the grout material and mixed thoroughly, with slow speed drill for 5 minutes. Before pouring the mixture, the grout mix should be left undisturbed for another 5 minutes to allow entrapped air to escape. Stub setting can be done either by template or by prop. In this video we will see the stub setting by prop. Stub is placed inside the pedestal. Ensure that the cleats at the bottom are properly tightened. Prop are fixed to temporary hold the stub. Surveyor will set the total station at the center of the location and perform the stub setting. As per the foundation drawing the reinforcement binding is done. The quantity of longitudinal rebars laid in each direction needs to be cross-checked with the drawing. 
Each intersection of longitudinal rebars and anchor bars needs to be binded with 1.5 square mm of steel ties. Chimney or pedestal rebars are binded in similar fashion. The quantity of vertical rebars and ties need to cross-check with drawing. Data verified during stub setting. Location center. Half diagonal. Back to back. Flange distance. Slope, verticality and final level of the stub. When all the said requirement matches properly, prop are fixed permanently till the completion of pedestal concreting. After completion of stub setting form box work is done. Cover block of 75 mm need to be placed in sufficient number to avoid expose of reinforcement. Routine concrete quality verification is mandatory during concrete pouring to ensure the healthiness of delivered concrete. Slump, temperature and cubes are taken before pouring the concrete. Later. After 28 days cubes need to be crushed to verify the acceptance criteria. Concrete temperature above 32 degrees Celsius should be avoided. Concrete shall be consolidated by the use of vibrator to ensure compaction of concrete into a dense homogeneous mass without honeycomb. Once the footing is completed chimney form box work is done. Proper support and spacer are fixed to withstand the concrete load after pouring. Stub slope, flange distance back to back and half diagonal need to be checked once again before pouring. Ensure that the earth strip and copper clad wire are connected to stub and reinforcement before pouring. Curing period of minimum 10 days is required after the concreting is completed. This enhances the strength and durability of concrete. The top of the foundation is coped at an angle of 15 degrees starting from the heel of the stub to prevent accumulation of water. Primary use of tar coat is to protect the concrete surface from chemical attack and ingress of water and gases. After the backfilling, grinding is done to provide a smooth finishing to chimney. White PU is applied on the exposed portion of foundation. It provides a solar reflective UV resistant waterproofing membrane to the foundation. If you have liked the video please share and subscribe.